This year we've been on the hunt for barrels. Nothing unusual about that for surfers, but when you're making a surf movie, the travelling is pretty different to a regular surf trip. In these behind the curtain episodes, we take you with us behind the scenes as we find and film the stunning waves you'll be seeing in Eye on the Barrel presented by Carlton Dry later in the year. We kicked off filming with the Mentawis high on our hit list. The trip I planned for this iconic surf spot was to keep it real and relive the early days. We wanted a feel for what it was like when surfers first came here seeking breaks in this part of the world. It would be basic. We'd base ourselves on an island and hire a fishing boat to surf the waves. There would be cockroaches, mozzies, heat and humidity. As we prep, I realised I'd have to take a generator. Not exactly keeping with the early days vibe, but essential, as we'd be hauling around high-tech camera gear and computers with us. We couldn't risk finding one in Sumatra, so I had to check one in from Australia and pray that it made it through the gauntlet of customs without being confiscated or held for some massive bribe by the authorities. It wasn't just a generator I was worried about as we headed to the airport. We had over 100 grand of equipment jammed into five bags, wrapped in t-shirts and wetsuits. I was trying not to sweat bullets on arrival to Padang. It's hard to look low-key when you have a trolley load of suitcases while all the travellers around us just had a backpack and a surfboard bag. Now we were here, it was time to get serious about the hunt for a swell. We had a great bunch of blokes with us on the trip. Central Coaster Peter Hayes, the Gold Coast Matt Shaw and Jarrah Tutton and Carl Grigson from the southwest of Oz. Our first stop was Nyang Nyang's, a land camp in the playgrounds area of the Mentawis. The place has numerous world-class waves. It's home to rifles, no can dooies, and they're all on our hit list. But like any surf trip, it's up to Mother Nature to come to the party. In our case, she was a no-show. We were left to content ourselves with the waves that we could find at bank vaults and pit stops. We weren't the only group of surfers not to score that week. There's another eight to 10 boatloads of frustrated and surf-starved wave hunters. So things got pretty scrappy in the lineup with a good amount of hassle. As frustrating as it was with little surf, there's more to Indo than just perfect waves. And we kept ourselves distracted. It's an awesome place just to chill out, kick back, enjoy some good company with friends, meet new ones and check out the locals. We packed up from our land camp Farewell to chickens and the mosquitoes and we're very happy to board our boat and set out on a fresh hunt for new waves. Our home for the next couple of weeks would be aboard the trusty Nyata. She was formerly a medical supply boat servicing the Mentawis after the tsunami but had recently been refitted as a surf tour vessel by the Mentawi surf trip crew. We couldn't wait to get on the search and quench our thirst for some tubes. The swell maps weren't looking all that good but we're making up for it with plenty of wishful thinking. No one wanted to utter the word skunk just yet. We cruised in the HT's pump to get some waves. We were greeted by a flotilla of boats all on the same program. It felt like Sydney Harbour on Boxing Day and the waves were a similar size. Finally, there was a swell forecast on the maps and something to lift our flagging spirits other than the beers we'd been enjoying each sunset with. With just a couple of days to the end of our trip, we had everything crossed, just hoping we'd get something decent and that the forecast would deliver the swell as promised. We couldn't believe the last two days. Perfect waves and we were totally free from crowds and hassle. Paradise was found, finally and we scored the waves that we needed for Iron the Barrel presented by Carlton Drive. 